chat GPT joke writing tool and techniques using the news headline topic of the first female Mexican president. We're now going to imagine that we have a specific topic we would like to write jokes about, then using AI tools like ChatGPT to help seed us with ideas that we can then construct jokes from, as well as possibly an entire routine from. Noting, of course, the first thing we need is a very specific topic so that we can go through this process. This is often the most difficult thing for uh, many people. Let me try to explain why we would need a very narrowly defined topic, usually because it sounds kind of counterintuitive. You might think, hey, look, if the topic is broader, I have more opportunity to find the incongruities. But that's kind of like shopping in an area where there's too many choices. Our brain freezes up. There's too many options. We just don't know what to do. And even if we break those, those options down a lot, there are still way more options than you would really think. We need to take the magnifying glass down into a, a tighter look to really see what is happening. And it'll be easier then to kind of deconstruct and take the moves that we want to make. So for example, if you take the smallest phrase or even one word you will, and you start to list out all the implicit and explicit assumptions that you make when you hear those words, you'll realize how imperfect language is and how much of the blank space we imagine in our mind. We make up our own story based on the phrase that we hear because we hear it in context. Now, any of those assumptions, especially the implicit assumptions, are an area for a joke because those are the areas of incongruity. You can then use that to go for a different direction, causing incongruity. You broke someone's story that the, you broke the picture that they painted in their mind. And that's funny. That's where the joke happens. So you really have to, to get narrow, uh, narrow things down so that you can look at the propositions in a in a narrow context because you will find that even with the smallest phrase there's all kinds of these assumptions that are being made all over the place and it'll be easier to see them when you get the magnifying glass down on those smaller phrases now where do you get the smaller phrases well the easiest way is you can use news headlines so we're looking at political topics so you can say who whoever's doing like what is greg gutfield talking about or john stewart or or the normal news what are they talking about and then I'm just going to take that headline as my premise and then I can deconstruct it. Just the headline itself is going to have all kind of assumptions within it. All kind of implicit and explicit assumptions that I can go from just from the headline. Now, notice you don't have to do news related topics. You could take any topic. Uh, sometimes I think a good place to start is idioms like uh, English sayings that I mean, you know, obviously I'm talking English. So think of English kind of general sayings. And so any kind of, of normal stock phrase uh, uh, in English, you know, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going or something like that. Those kind of phrases, we already know what they mean. So we don't even have to say the second half of the phrase. We already have it in our mind. So if I want to break someone's in anticipation with that kind of phrase, I could just change the second half. The, when the going gets tough, the tough does something else, right? Or something like that. And it's already a built-in assumption that's been made. So a lot of times I think that's a good place for people to just look up a bunch of English idioms, a bunch of English phrases, and then changes. Like one is like, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, right? You don't even have to say do as the Romans do when you say when in Rome, because people assume that you're going to say do as the Romans do. And so then you can, of course, follow it up with something stupid. When in Rome, kick a Roman in the ball, you know, <laughs> something dumb, right? You could just end up the second half and just break the assumption of what they expect to happen. So that's another good kind of place to practice. But any set of words, just you could practice with it. Okay, so then we're going to take this one, female president of Mexico. So it's a nice short phrase. That's basically the headline that we're going to imagine first female president of Mexico. So so let's say ChatGTP is going to be kind of like, again, these big comedians or these big networks, they have joke writing teams that are huge. 
and but they're actually scared of using things like chat gtp because because again they can't do that because they they want to pay the the joke writers and stuff and whatnot but in the chat gtp you can't really just say give me a joke related to that you could do that they might give you that seeds you with some ideas we'll test that out but what you want to do is is label the propositions now there's a couple ways to do this classically you make a list of two things. This is a common thing to do. Take take two ideas from the headline and try to make a list about them so that you can then have two things that are related but have incongruity. That's one way to do it. I've actually found that the most straightforward way is to just ask ChatGTP to give me some implicit and explicit assumptions related to the phrase. So and instead of me making the list to start out, we'll take a look at that second in a second using ChatGTP. We're going to say, look, take this phrase and just give me, give me all of the implicit and explicit assumptions. And once I have those, I, I can see the story that's being made in people's mind just from this phrase. And those are opportunities for me to break them. So the prompt would look something like this. Uh, list and I always put a number or else chat GTP will give you like five or ten and I want something more like 50 or something a uh, list of 50 explicit and implicit propositions hopefully I spelled that right or assumptions from this phrase Mexico's first female president so that's as specific as a prompt as I can get I just put the actual headline you know in there I didn't try to break out two ideas or anything I just said give me the prompt so so here's some prompts uh, that it's given us. So let's just read them as they come through here. So Mexico, uh, this explicitly refers to the country of Mexico. So notice when we say Mexico, maybe I didn't mean me so that's so notice that's an area for a for a joke. So it, it's the first it's the first female president of Mexico. Maybe I wasn't referring to Mexico itself, but little Mexico that's that's somewhere else like a city or something like that, you know. Uh, th this indicates a sense of uh, pre precedence. She is the first in this role. So we can break these assumptions here. So these are all like the, and look at how many of these assumptions are being made. These are the implicit. Now I've already written some out here and I've written some jokes related to it. So I copied and pasted those last time I did this into Word. So I would copy and paste that into Word. And then I'd say, okay, look, or can I break some of these assumptions? So it says, Mexico has elected a president who is female. So how could I break, how could I make up a story where that implicit thing that comes into your mind when you hear that headline is broken? And we can obviously say, well, actually the, the cartels put her there, right? She, so she, she has been elected as president. So we can say, well, and again, I'm being pessimistic. I'm, I don't know a lot about Mexican politics and I'm not trying to be offensive on Mexico. I don't know anything about much of it, but I know cartels are a problem over there, right? So we could say, uh, you know, well, was she elected? Now the cartels put her there, right? That, that's an assumption that we can basically make. Uh, uh, are you sure she's female? So obviously we said it's, they elected their first female president. And in, I know in the United States, we have all this, like LGTB, like trans thing. And so you could go that route and try to say, are you sure she's female? You can't really, never can tell <laughs> these days. I don't even know what female, right? You can try to play with that assumption here. So this is the first time a female has held the presidency in Mexico. That's one of the assumptions, of course. It's the first female president was the headline. So you assume it's the first time, except that the last dude's wife basically held held indirectly by clutching tightly his pearls or what right so you could say yeah it's the first female president but not really the last president's wife basically ran the country i know i know joe biden ain't the person running our country right now if it's got to, if it's not jill i don't know who's running the country right so you could say you could say she's the first female pre right so mexico is a country with a president uh, system of government so again, the assumption here, she's the first female president. What's the implicit assumption? Well, if there's a president, they must have a democratic republic system. And of course, you can question that if you want to be cynical on the politics and say, well, I'm not sure it's a democratic system. The cartels run the place or something. I'm sorry to keep going back to the cartels, but that's, you know, I'm just trying to break the assumption. So the role of the president in Mexico is significant enough to be noteworthy, right? And so you could say, 
why is this even news? It doesn't it doesn't matter or something like that. And and you might take the angle of it's the first female president of Mexico. And and as it and the assumption is that that's newsworthy. That's why it's a headline. And so you might break that assumption by saying, hey, look, we'd have we've had female people running all kinds of things. You know, it's not not really a not a not a big deal at this point. We've had or, or something like that. You could try to take that angle, breaking the assumption, right? The election process in Mexico allows female candidates. So you might say, well, that assumes if it's the first female president that she won the election process. So you might kind of question that, like, well, who let the woman in or something? You know, like, I, I don't know. I'm, like, I'm just saying. So there's been a president elected in Mexico recently. There's another assumption. If a first female president has been elected, then, of course, there's an assumption that a president in general, has recently been elected. We don't need to say that. We don't need to say, well, they recently had an election. They recently elected a president and the president they elected is a female. All those assumptions are implicit when you say that the, there's been a first female president elected. And so if you list out all those propositions, those are the propositions you could just break, right? All you have to do is break that with some narrative, some story format, and you have a joke format. Prior to this, all, all Mexican presidents were male. So again, you can make that, you can question that. This is our first female president. And you could say something like, I don't know, that last guy looked pretty female to me. It looked pretty feminine as far as I could tell. His policies look like a woman made him. Or so, you know, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to, the presidency is, a, is, an, is an elected position. So again, you can question that. Mexico has a political system that supports democratic elections. Again, that's an assumption you could clearly question if you wanted to question the political system. The president of Mexico serves as the head of state. Again, you can question that just like you could in America. You, you know, is the president running anything over there? He can't even, you know, get to the restroom on time or something, you know, like, I don't, what is it, you know. So th this event marks a historic milestone uh, in Mexico. So again, the assumption here, first female president. What's the assumption? Glass ceiling has been broken once again, historic. And uh, obviously you could say, you know, so what, right? That would be the breaking of that assumption. We've seen women breaking all kinds of glass ceilings and, you know, just tell me if she can do the job. That's what I wanna know. Gender equality and political representation is progressing in Mexico. So, so again, is, it, is that the headline, right? Is it, is it a progressing of gender, whatever? So the, the presidency in Mexico has duties and responsibilities tied to government. The president has a role in international relations. Da, da, da. So the election of a female president in Mexico might inspire other nations. So you might say, you know, given the fact that Mexico has run... So again, you can break that assumption. You can say, well, you're, the, the headline, the way it's produced is saying, glass ceiling broke it. Female breaks the glass ceiling. She's the president of Mexico. And you, and you can undermine that, right, by saying, well, I don't know, the, the Mexico is basically run by the cartels. Having a female president elected seems contrary or seems like a step back. You know, you could make that argument. Again, I don't know a lot about Mexican politics. I'm not trying to say that like literally. I'm just saying these are ways that you can break, you know, the all of these assumptions. OK, let's look at another strategy. These are implicit. The president identifies as female. The president could challenge the traditional gender roles. The election was fair and democratic, which, again, you can kind of those are assumptions that you don't have to say that this is the point. Like, I don't have to say the first female president was elected. It was a fair and democratic election is the assumption, but really she was elected by the cartels. You don't need to say that because these assumptions are implicit in when I say the first female president was elected, you assume fair democratic elections within the statement. So, that, so again, I can break this premise without having to do a setup specifically telling you the premise, right? And that's the point. It's implicit in the phrase. Every phrase has tons of these implicit things that we have to construct mentally in our mind to make sense of anything because language is not, is not specific enough. It's, it's not detailed enough. 
So chat, and I always say chat GTP, I think it's chat P G G P T, is it? Uh, cliches. So, so, so we might say side by side, uh, we're going to tell chat GTP this time, I want, I'm going to make two ideas that are dissimilar from the headline and make lists about them so that I can get these incongruity ideas that I can play with to put side by side. This is another technique often advocated by the joke doctor. I forget it's Corley or something. He's a, he, so you could check that stuff out if you want to look into it in more detail. How would I construct this? You might have a prompt and you can have ChatGTP just create you the lists to give you the seeds to then build your jokes from. So instead of manually creating these lists, I can say, uh, I'm going to I'm going to say that the two related ideas uh, is is going to be a president and a female. Right. So 50 cliches or common phrases related to a woman and 50 cliches or common phrases related to president to two ideas that are separate coming from the same headline that I'm going to put side by side and just say, OK, give me give me that chat GTP. And then it just says, OK, boom, and it starts to construct a table. Now, this table, I'd like to get this table in Word or you can possibly get it uh, in Excel. Notice if I copy it directly into Word, uh, it's kind of a it's kind of uh, not the easiest thing to do. So a lot of times I'll copy it into Excel first and then basically copy it into Word just from a logistics standpoint. Also note that I'm using ChatGTP4 but the free version works as well. I use this one because it also has images, which we might look at later, but there's also free tools for images uh, these days as well. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to copy this and say, okay, if I was to copy this and go to do, let's copy this and say copy. And then I could put it over here in Word, but it doesn't paste well, right? So it's like, ah, that's not good. Let's go. So I could say, let's paste it in Excel. Boom. And then, and then it pastes into a table format at least, which is nice. And I can use it in Excel because then I can actually move these around. But what I was doing here is that I'd then take it into Excel. Let's, I'm going to undo like it, it's as easy as this. I'll show you how easy it is by not messing it up. I'm trying to undo until I, so I could just paste it in here, go paste and then copy again from Excel. And now I would take it into Word and paste it as a tape. So I'm using uh, destination style, pasting it as a table. And so now I've got this nice little table and then I can just add another column over here. So I'm going to add a column, boop. And now I've got my description so I can write, I can write my jokes that are coming from these two columns as I did over here. So here's a list I did before. Now there, there's a couple ways you can do this. I have my, my thing over here. So now we have on the left-hand side, cliches, phrases related to women. And then on the right, cliches and phrases related to presidents. And either one of these, I'm going to keep the other one in my mind and try to say, okay, can I get some incongruity between these two ideas? So the fairer sex is a, is a common phrase. Is there anything I can pair the fairer sex as president that would, that would then be like incongruity? They don't seem to go together which is kind of, which would make a funny phrase would basically be the idea. Sometimes you can mix and match these two ideas. So you can say, I'm going to mix. That's what these colors are doing. So over here, the leader of the free world. Uh, so I just try to use some alliteration. It's a leader lady or a lady leader of the free world. So the, it's a late, it's not a leader of the free world. It's the lady leader of the free world, you know, and it's kind of stupid, but, and then we have the, uh, beauty and brains is a common phrase commander in chief so beauty and brains became beauty brains and power you know that would be like and then hell hath no fury like a woman scorn presidential pardon so these two i put together i tried to say well hell hath no fury like the scorn of a woman president right hell hath no fury and then you would expect 
if you're if you know the English this English idiom this English phrase hell hath no fury like a woman scorn well now I have hell hath no fury like the scorn of a woman president right so it's a little bit different a little bit of a play on words and then so you can forget about that presidential pardon right so now I'm kind of putting in the two together which don't which has some incongruity because again this one has incongruity because you would expect the second part of that phrase a woman scorn which you can easily break because that is already implicitly in people's mind with any change of phrase to the second half of it and then down here we have so you can you can now this is like a tagline to it adding on to that joke so you can forget about the, that presidential pardon right because she's not going to pardon you which <laughs> a woman's touch oval office uh so so now we've so i compared the overall office uh down down here so the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world so the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world literally as commander in chief right so now the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world literally because she's the commander in chief right so a, a woman's place is in the home. Now notice I'm kind of mirroring these two. That's why I'm using the colors to mark these two. So it says a woman place is in the home at the Oval Office. So notice the home is usually you'd think of kind of mundane, mundane or, or, you know, a normal home. But the home is, the, is in the Oval Office, which is in the White House, right? So a woman's place is in her home in the executive room of the overall office, which is two things that are both home, just position, but incongruity. Now, notice if you have them in the same place over here, you can you can kind of like if I wanted these two to go together instead of making them different colors, I can actually in Excel move them. So I could say, let, let me put this one up here and I'm going to put these two together. That's why in Excel, it's kind of cool to be able to do, do it in Excel. But then you don't have as, as easy of a writing. You have to write in a cell over here, which is not as uh, nice, although doable. But you might like to be able to line up the topics side by side in Excel, which is a little bit... You can do that kind of over here too, but you have to kind of copy and paste in a little bit more of a way to do that. All right. The buck stops here. A woman play the Oval Office. Okay, so the weaker sex veto power... So she wears the pants in the family. So executive privilege. So due to DEI, the diversity, equity, and, and uh, inclusion, I think that stands for, the weaker sex has executive privilege. So I tried to do some play on words with the weaker sex having executive privilege. Behind every great man is a great woman. Uh, the buck stops here. So I combined that with the buck stops here. The buck stops here because behind every great man and great country is a great woman. You know, I'm just trying to put those two uh, together so you have that just position of the two phrases. The West Wing, uh, Mother Hen. Mother Hen has flown in to the West Wing. So now you, that one flows kind of nicely. It's it, the, 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 the just position isn't as, you know, you have some incongruity with the Mother Hen is now in the West Wing, which are two ideas that don't seem to go together, but you're putting them side by side because of these two ideas are paralleled by the title, by the, by the headline. And then you have some alliteration, right? The mother hen has flown in to the West Wing. So you have some rhyme, assonance, alliteration. So again, you can, you can any of the, like, if you really want to like practice this concept of, uh, of, of, of taking a phrase and looking for a joke in it, any word, any two words, any phrase will have all kinds of assumptions in it. And if you can list out those assumptions, you should be able to make a joke about the smallest of phrases, basically anything. You should be able to make some kind of stupid, at least pun or something about. So uh, bully pulpit, bull busters, not at the bully pulpit. And then uh, what else did I have here? Most cabinet meetings are about cabinet so i tried to say she has a cabinet meeting and now the cabinet meetings are about the cabinets literally they need replacing <laughs> or something I, you know so then down here the, i had the chap gtp and i just said give me prompt jokes related to female presidents so here's what most people would do 
if they try to use chat GTP, they're just going to say, ah, oh, here's the headline. Give me jokes related to a female president. Now, you could do that, uh, but you're going to get jokes that are, are like not great, right? And they're also chat GTP is going to be politically correct and leaning left, right? So that might be that might work for you or it might not. So you're going to get more bland jokes with joke construction that aren't going to be very edgy, you would think. And they're certainly not going to be they're probably going to lean politically correct because that's the programming that's going into them, it, it seems to me. So why did the female president bring a broom to the debate to sweep the competition away? So notice again, that's not great, but it, it could be a good seed. I mean, it's like it's a good seed. Like you could build a whole story based on that. So, again, I think it's still worth just doing that. Uh, and I don't think you can like just take this out as your routine, but that's some good seed ideas with that. And you can tweak that to wherever you want to go. How does the female president make decisions like every other president, only with a questions about her outfit? Again, that's kind of what we're doing with the lists. So I, it's not bad. I mean, I, you know, it's not the best thing, but what do you call a female president's all woman advisory board? The cabinet of she retirees. Eh, why, why was the female president uh, excellent at multitasking? She had to run the country and dodge fashion uh, critiques at the same time. So not great. But again, you can build on it. Notice that I didn't put the number. Give me jokes. I should have said give me like give me 50 jokes. So then a lot of them might repeat. And you're not, you can't use all of them and you're going to have to read through the jokes. And it's like, I got to read 50 jokes. It's like, yeah, if you want, you know, it's the seed ideas and then you build from it from there. So it's not like it's going to do the whole thing, just like a joke writing team. I mean, you, they're going to give you jokes. You can't just take all the jokes that they give you, but you're going to take what they give you and use it as a seed idea to build on it. So another thing you could use is say, you might use puns. Uh, and say, instead of giving me a joke, which will give me a joke structure, why did the why did the president cross the road? Or instead of trying to do a list format where you have a specific joke construction with just position uh, things or the prompts, we could say, give me puns and we're going to go specifically related to the wordplay. So now give give me uh, chat GP puns, uh, 50 puns. So the prompt might be give we want 50 this is the prompt we want 50 puns related to to female and 50 puns related to president and you could do this as a table side by side again but i'm just going to say give me puns and you, so you might, again, do the two puns side by side and build another table, but specifically tell them, I want wordplay. I want puns. So she had a photographic memory, but never developed it. Oh, so it doesn't really specifically say president there, right? So now they're kind of going broad on the woman, but she saw, saw busy with her knitting. She was a shoe in at the fashion show so she's a shoe in at the fashion kind of flows show time heals all wounds it's about giving and teching she's a real a uh, jim and nine person <laughs> jim, jim and nine her favorite drink woman go juice again pretty bad a lot of them but some of them will be good so i've copied those over here leading with grace and power she's got presidential presence right running a nation with determination so that's more of a kind of a rhyme thing no hesitation in her decisions she's inaugural to inaugural to each barrier uh, a first ladies of the land making herstory so there's one that's you know kind of funny herstory at at term at a time uh, she's madame president not just madame she's madame president not just madame <laughs> uh, it's kind of funny. <laughs> Her policies are seal worthy, uh, turning the West Wing into the best wing. 
Oh, it's kind of funny. True commander in she. She's on the executive suite side. Hail to the chiefess. The presidential runway is hers. She presides with pride. First lady on and foremost. Uh, she's got the presidential penmanship leading with feminine influence. So again, a lot of them aren't great, but you'll, if you read 50 of them, which doesn't take much time, chat TP thought them up, you get a couple where are like, ah, kind of like that. That was pretty good. I could tweak it out a little bit. And so then you, and that's your seed idea, right? So another one, here are some rhyming phrases. So the prompt, you might give a prompt like this. And, and so this is trying to get some more alliteration or rhetorical stuff into your routine possibly so you might say give me give me 50 rhyming phrases related phra phrases related to a female and 50 rhyming phrases related to president and so I'll just go boom. And then then it give me some little some make me sound like a poet. And so now we're gonna say he's say there it is, lady shady, sister, mister maiden, girl swirl. And so I did this before and it gave me longer phrases. So I had rhyming phrases and so it looks something like this, which these can be catchy little phrases that you might use as like a title or an intro or as part of the wording of your prompt or setup. So leading with finesse and a stylish dress. Oh, executive and strong, breaking barriers all along. Policy queen and the oval scene. So that's kind of catchy, right? I could see I could see I could see that fitting in a particular the power and grace she leads the place. Madame President no evident first lady of the land with a firm hand in the highest seat making history sweet she's got the plan as the leading woman breaking glass ceilings with strong dealings from sea to sea she's the key running the nation with determination and the chair so grand with the world in her hand with strength so keen, she's the governing queen. From coast to coast, she's the most. And the role so prime, making headlines. With the heart so bold, her stories told. And the White House face with a smiling face. With power so vast, she's unsurpassed. Leading with flair, showing she cares. And the oval, tall, <laughs> so it almost rhyme, reads like a poem. And it just got spit out directly from chat GTP. So it's, again, a lot of these you'd say, eh, they're not great. But a couple of them you're like, eh, that's kind of cool in and of itself. And, and again, you can put some rhyming and alliteration beats into your, into your thing. This one is one where I said, uh, where I took one of the phrases that I came up with uh, when I did the side-by-side -side comparison and then tried to do some alliteration, some, some, more alliteration with that so or more rhetorical techniques so here are some rhyming phoretic phrases related to female presidents exercising veto power so when i was doing the side by side before i i said veto and i tried to match that up with uh with v, with 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 makeup so i was trying to match up nail polish with veto because her toe because the pun on a toe so she's vetoing with a toe that has nail polish on it or something was my idea. And, and then I just, so then I put the prompt in there to say, give me like a poetic phrase related to this pun that is related to a veto, but it's a real toe, right? And it came up with this. Uh, in the over office glow, she lets her veto show with a toe and red nail polish. She strikes the final blow and so on. None of them were great, but hit this one was kind of okay. It wasn't a good pun really that I started with. But the idea is you can take any of those, any of the ideas you got to from your breaking of the prompt, prompt up top ideas and anything you got from the list and then say, here's my outline of the joke. Chat GTP, could you make this sound cooler? Could you make it sound like a poem? Could you, could you make it rhyme or something like this? And then, and then you can use Chat GTP to further 
put more style into into the into the joke that she came up with from the list technique. So in this one, it says the chambers of might where laws are made right. Her toe is red nail polish, a veto bold and bright. So she's got her her red nail polish toe because she's going to veto with it. Was That's what I was going for, at least. She stands with grace and pride, the nation's trusted guide. Her red polish toe says no to bills she can't abide. Veto. That I was trying to say. In the halls of power, she shines like a flower with a red polished toe. The vetoes in the hour. I don't know. So I tried to make a poem out of my pun. So those are just some ways so that you can use ChatGTP. You want to be the idea is that you want to be specific on what you give ChatGTP in terms of narrowing down what you're looking for. So that and if you do that properly. ChatGTP really can give you good prompts, not just to specifically write the script itself. That's it's not going to really that's not going to be good because it's not going to be tailored towards you. But it can act as something that can generate tools or seed ideas that you could just sort through and then narrow down and then ask ChatGTP to refine down the wheat from the chaff, right? You refine down, oh, they gave, that's good. Now chat GTP, give me more information on this pun. Reword this pun this way. Make it sound smoother. Put some alliteration in it. Put some rhyme into it. Change the structure of it. Be specific on the prompts you give chat GTP and chat GTP will give you some specifics that will be good.